How is it going, you lovely lot? Welcome back to Tokyo Rising. It's episode number 37, and today, two big games. We have been going really well lately. If we win these two games today, suddenly, we full our own promotion contention. Now, of course, last episode, we broke our transfer record. That transfer still hasn't happened, but despite the new additions not arriving, I think we've actually won our last five games in a row. And when it comes to the league table, we're looking pretty good. In fifth place, as things stand, some challenging games today, though, as we are going to be taking on Vigalta, who are in second, and Espels, who are currently in seventh. And in more good news, just before we run the intro, I have signed a new contract at the club until 2030. So that is some more good news. Our manager profile here, I've not shown in a little while. Here it is in all its glory. I feel like we've been doing pretty well, all things considering so far. Winning plenty of awards, which is nice. I do find it funny that in the kind of job history here, it actually has me listed as the under-18s and B-team manager at various points when those teams didn't have managers and I actually had to do some of their games. So technically, I've had three jobs while I've been in charge. K kind of. Fifth in the league, brand new contract, everything is coming up Millhouse except one thing, we lost in the cup. And that game that we lost was against Espools. We'll talk about it after the intro. As I've already mentioned, today is episode number 37. Thank you for coming back as always, and welcome back to Japan for the penultimate episode of the year. First things first, key player is updated on our team screen here. I feel like it's been constantly updating, to be fair, but Tabba, the 17-year-old forward, has become the key man. This guy is comfortably the best team player in the team, uh, as you can see here. He's got a contract for the next three years. If we get promoted at some point in that time, he gets a two-year extension, and the 17-year-old, not only is he developing superbly, which I suppose is indicated by the arrows, but in terms of form, 12 goals, four assists in 14 games. This man is solely, re really, the reason we're on a bit of a recovery as of late. And I say a recovery as of late because we did go for a little bit of a wibble and a wobble, didn't we, prior to the last episode happening, where, of course, we got two clean sheets and two wins. As I mentioned, we have been knocked out of a cup competition since last episode, but we have won our last four league games in a row. That is nice. Of course, last episode, we ended things with a 1-0 win in J2. We followed that up with a win in the J League Cup. That was against FC Jifu. We managed to beat them 2-1, and then well, we had a big game against the team currently top of the table in J2, in Matsumoto Yamaga, and this just didn't go to plan. Uh, look, they are just a very good team. They're a better team. Their player of the match in this game was Tanaka, who, to be honest, isn't even one of their best players in their team. If we just look at their team and look at their quality, Suzuki here, their striker, is their best player. 14 goals for him in 21 games this isn't actually that insane. But I feel like they've just got this crazy level of quality. And for a team that were predicted to finish 14th, they're just chilling at the top of the table. They've looked very good so far. After that defeat in the league, I was hoping we could bounce back in the J League Cup where we were taking on Espels at our opposition in today's episode. Their media prediction right now is fifth. Their stadium here looks absolutely insane. It looks very unique. We are doing it as an away day, so don't worry about that. But yes, over two legs in the cup, we couldn't get a result. We actually won the first leg 2-1 away from home, but then in the home leg, which admittedly did go to extra time, we faltered at the death. Yes, it was, I'm trying to remember now what it was, it was 5-5 on aggregate going into the 119th minute. And then they got two late goals. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, there was lots of shots in this game. It wasn't a great defensive performance, and Yoruki for them got a hat-trick. Yeah, this guy was very good in the air. I don't have tall players like this, man. It's not fair. Bit disappointing to get knocked out of the League Cup, but you know what? We bounced back with some really good form over the month of June. We've won our last five games in a row, four of those in the league. We beat Jeff United 3-1 away from home. That was a great result. 1-0 against YSCC, not the most convincing. They're a team towards the bottom, but you know what? A win is a win. Against Ventfrey Kofu, we took an early 3-1 lead in this game and then held on for a 3-2 win eventually. As I mentioned, we then had an Emperor's Cup game, and this game here, as you can see, was against Yokohama FC, who are a J1 team. We managed to beat them 2-0. This wasn't a classic in terms of the overall performance scoreline or number of shots or really anything, but you know what? It was a classic because we caused an upset. Kayanoki at left midfielder has come into the team recently. He's kind of our third choice left winger at this point, but due to two injuries to the two players ahead of him, he was on the pitch for this game, and I'll tell you what, I was glad he was on this the pitch for this game. He's kind of the reason we won it. And most recently, we took on Tajigi Soccer Club 3-1 win here Tabber the 17 year old with a hat trick this man scores for fun he got a 9 minute hat trick in this game and when you look at his recent form 
safe to say he's been the main man for us. Now, in the next round of the Emperor's Cup, we have been drawn against Grampus away. Whilst I would love to go on a run in the Emperor's Cup, I'm not going to concern myself with this game too much. I think the priority, ultimately, has to be on our J2 form. We need to try and get out of this division. And to be fair, when you look at the league table, we're only four points away from the team in second. I suppose on the flip side, we're only four points away from the team in ninth. There is a very congested bunch of teams who are probably hoping that they can somehow get into the promotion fight, be that automatically or via the playoffs. Right now, we're in and amongst the pigeons. And while the pigeon that we are taking on today is one of those teams trailing us, if they were to beat us, they would go ahead of us. And that team is Espels. They were relegated from J1 back in 2022, expected to bounce back, but it has not really happened for them. I feel like that is a, a common trend in J2. Some teams just fall down here and get stuck for the long haul. Their key man, as you can see here, is Yamahara. He is a decent little left back with a lot of quality. I suppose you can see by the wages that he's on, £8,000. When it comes to the budget that this team were taking on today have, and our own budget, the difference is vast. Of course, we got knocked out of them in the League Cup. I want revenge. But before that, an away day to the IAI Stadium, Nihon Daira. Definitely nailed that. Let's go see what this away day is all about. So today we're taking on Espuls. They have a very cool name. I feel like Espuls is just a cool name for a football club. And actually, compared to some recent away days, we're not going too far. We're going to Shizuoka and we are heading right here to the stadium that appears to be in the middle of a park. Yeah, uh, did anyone else get in deja vu? Here is Espulse's stadium. I'm going to be honest, from above, it looks like the ultimate mishmash of kind of just half-finished stadiums that have been stuck together. I think I kind of love it. There is a car park immediately next door. In fact, I'll tell you what, it's a stonking car park and a half. There is then the stadium no park. I assume that this is actually a park, but you're not allowed to park cars here. Maybe there's a football pitch set up nevertheless. More car parking, and then there's loads of fields here, which I'm going to assume is some kind of farming. I mean, I, I don't know. What do they grow in this part of Japan? Answers on a postcard, please let me know. The uniformity of it is quite satisfying, isn't it? It makes me want to play city skylines. I want to pretend the stadium is close to the sea. I mean, you know what? In the grand scheme of things, it's not a million miles away, but it is just on the edge of town. You can see here is the main bit of town. Everything's going on here, and then Espulse just tucked in the corner with tennis courts next door. Right, there's not a load of roads nearby, so I'm a bit apprehensive here, but they were in J1, so maybe people will have gone out and done photospheres for me. There's loads of photospheres. I can go straight in the car park. So that is the stadium over there. It already looks quite cool, doesn't it? Here is the car park as well, in all its glory. Uh, it's... I mean, it's a car park. It's not the most functional, is it? It's not a car park where you can pull up during the week and there's other places to go. I'm pleased to report as well, the park that is the no park, we can just go around the edge of. There is a football pitch set up and I can I can just go around the edge. Uh, I don't know what's going on here. What is going on here? What What is that? Is that a golf club? Holders? I don't think it is. Uh, no idea. I'm just on a little adventure around the edge of the park to see what I can see. And at the moment, all I'm really seeing is trees, although there's, there's something going on over there. What is happening here? What are we up to, chaps? Are they playing golf? Wait, is this a pitch and put area? There's flags. Oh my, I love pitch and put. There's Adventureland. What is in Adventureland? Can I see? Any f I, th I think it's over Adventureland? I'm sorry to report, we will never know what is in Adventureland. Together we will have to make up some lore or something. The entrance is here. Yeah, no, no idea what's in Adventureland. Answers on a postcard. Come up with a creative backstory. How cute is it as well? They've got this little gutter around the edge, which originally I wasn't sure what it's for. I wonder if that's to stop golf balls running into the road. That's so cute. Right, we are here to view the football stadium over there. Suppose we should go do that. Here is the stadium from the outside, and uh, as you can see here, we are being welcomed in in English. They knew I was coming. I'm going to go for a wander around the edge of the stadium. Now, this stadium is on one hell of air. I hope the pitch has been leveled out inside. From the outside, though, it's actually quite a cool-looking stadium. It looks like an older stadium, but we've seen a lot of new modern Space Age ones. It's nice to have a bit of a throwback. I mean, it just looks really cool with all the vegetation outside. Just continuing my tour around the other side of the stadium. This stadium looks so cool, doesn't it? It's like built into the hill. Tennis courts down here. Well, can we go for a wander up the hill? Of course we bloody can. What the dickens is this? Is this just another scoreboard in the stadium? I'm going to assume so, but it's like outside the stadium? I mean, you know what? You do you, Japan. I can get a little peek through here. It looks like they've got some good scran at this stadium, too. I want some good food. I feel like I'm meant to hate it because all the seats are different colours, but at least they're really bloody bright and colourful and fun. 
And they've got some orange seats for the football club. I really like this stadium and I feel like I'm not meant to. We're at the top of what I assume is the away end here, given the fact we're all in yellow. Uh, in fact, is this Kashiwa Raysol? Every away day I do, we end up with Kashiwa Raysol fans just in the ground, I've noticed. Uh, maybe don't look over this wall if you don't like heights. But here's the stadium. Look at the, look at the surroundings. This is class, isn't it? I love it. Look, I've done a lot of away days during my away day kind of adventures in Football Manager videos. This is one of the first away days where I look at it and I genuinely just want to go to this stadium. It looks quality. I just keep finding new angles to enjoy the stadium from. Normally I'd be annoyed about the fact that half a stand hasn't got a roof. Doesn't even bother me here. I really want to go. If anyone from Esports Football Club's watching and you want to pay for me to come and watch a game and I'll, I'll document it, I'll tweet about it, I'll, I'll come. Please invite me. I want to be here. I think it's the way the stadium is just kind of built into a hill where they just flattened it out. It reminds me of building something in Minecraft, really, where they don't mean didn't need to flatten it out on this bit of hill, but they've just decided to. It just looks really cool. And the fact it's like sat on this hill overlooking the whole city, you've got like the sea. I wonder if on a clear day you can see like the sea from the stand through like the gaps. I would, I had no idea. This is just a cool stadium. I love it. I want to give it a crazy score. I mean, there was bloody pitch and put in this field here. The car park is absolutely sensational. Am I getting carried away? Like, I just, I just, I don't know. It's the way it's nestled in the hills above the, the rest of the town. The fact it just looks like a mix and match. It feels historical, doesn't it? It feels like it's lived a footballing life. I feel like this has really descended into me just getting waxed lyrical about a random Japanese football stadium. I've fallen in love today, everyone. I've got to give it a great score. I love it. Pitch and put. Cool stadium, just unique. The location's amazing. Car parks. Um, pff, nine out of ten. Nine. Out, it's one of my favourite away days ever. Anyway, now that I'm done being nice to Espools, we do need to beat them. They're in seventh. Like I said, if they were to beat us, they would leap ahead of us, which I really, really don't want to see. Looking at the team, it's a bit of a mix and match, but you know what? For the first time in a little while, there's not too many key players missing. I guess the biggest players missing, really, are going to be Abdul Ahmed at left mid, He's out for the next two weeks. Our next choice left mid in Sakurai is also injured, which is a bit annoying. It's for that reason that Kayanoki is back in the team. I mentioned the fact he had a quite a good game in the Emperor's Cup. And elsewhere at the back, Takeshi is in at centre-back because Yataki has been suspended. He's been a naughty boy, the captain. Besides that, though, this is pretty much the starting 11 I've started to settle into. Takagi and Taba up top together have been really, really good lately. They are the first two players in our team to break double digits. Takagi's recent form has been pretty outstanding, to be fair, after a long period with an injury. In terms of the rest of the team, the Brazilians of Freya and Denise in the centre of the midfield have been the two other big standout performers for us as of late. Gonna hope they come good again here. Now, this is the easier of the two games we've got going on today, and Tab, Tab has already been sent off once in his career. He's murdered another man. I have an amazing key player. He's 17. He's a wonder kid. He's the future. He can't stop getting sent off. I'm, actually, I'm really upset. That is the second red card he's got in 14, well, 15 now appearances for the year. Is that going to be a problem? I mean, in terms of what we do to remedy the situation, I'm not going to change things, I don't think, too radically here. Instead, I'm just going to tell our wider players to sit that little bit deeper and not commit as far up the pitch. Takagi, good luck, Godspeed, you're up top on your own now, son. It's going to be now, I think, a very, very long 80 minutes. Away from home, down a man, Espels. I've just spent so long talking about how nice their stadium is, and now I just want to escape it as quick as possible. We are going to have to hold on, I imagine, in this game if we want to get any anything. We're going to sit deep. We're going to use, obviously, all our players behind the ball to try and just well, cling on for as long as we can. If they get the early goal in this game, naturally, it's going to be problematic, isn't it? Saito wide to Yomisaka. Options in the middle from to maybe aim for. Pulls it back to Ronaldo. They've got a bloke called Ronaldo in their team. A bad day gets worse. Ronaldo plays through the ball. And but for some very, very poor finishing... That would have been a goal. In fact, I think Nakano saved it. Apologies to our goalkeeper. He's made one good save. He's probably going to need to make a whole lot more. Our star man, Nakano, in goal. Don't feel like he's had a heroic performance in a live com yet. Today would be a good day to get it. I know I'm going to be asked about their player called Ronaldo. Uh, here he is in all his glory. He's actually played for Espel since 2021. Joined them on a free transfer. And in this save game, he should have been their main man forever. 20 minutes played. You know what? We've kept a clean sheet now for 14 minutes since going a man down. This feels okay, doesn't it? This feels good. If the time just wants to keep ticking away in the top left, that would be A-OK. -okay. 
So far in this game, three shots, one per 10 minutes of football played. If we keep going like this, maybe, just maybe, we can hold on for a point. This is certainly a game where, going into it, I eyed up as a, let's win this, let's get some points on the board and nail a playoff spot, given the circumstances. If we could prevent Espels going above us and just get a draw here, that would be absolutely ideal. Kyanoki's picked up a booking at left back. Uh, I mean, I have Koshimichi, who I could bring in. At left mid, he is our fourth choice left mid. Really, I was thinking I was going to sell at one point this year. Now I'm questioning it. Instead, I think what I'm going to do is take off Kayanoki on a booking, and then going to bring Fukatsu in to play at left back, and then Ono is actually going to go and play left mid for us. Now, he can't actually play left mid, so I'm going to have to play him higher up the pitch, but he's a very good player from a defensive point of view. I just remember they changed it so you can't play a defensive winger high up the pitch this year in game, didn't they? Uh... Or could you never? Could you never play a defensive winger here? Maybe you probably one of those Mandela effect memories. You know what? I'm going for this. This makes complete sense. I'm going for two wing backs on the left hand side. I mean, from a defensive point of view, Ono is a really, really good player to have on the pitch. So I feel like bringing him in and playing him in that kind of vacated left midfield area would make sense. But rather than playing him in a position he literally has never played in his life. I guess he'll be a left wing back here. We've survived, by the way, the first 20 minutes of this half. Players are getting a little bit tired, so I'm going to make some changes. Yoni Yama on Yukum. Hashimitsu, you know what? I'm going to have him as a little out ball on the right-hand side. Our formation is getting more and more messy by the minute. And Takaki, you know what? You've run hard. You've done your best. Now you can have a break. Yoni Yama... Just plays a deep line playmaker on support, mate. I feel like now it's about just holding on with some fresh legs in the midfield. Saito, their goalkeeper, to kick it forward. Obviously, fresh legs brought on. Hashizume is going to try and be that out ball for us. The pacey right attacking midfielder could be a good player to just try and clear the ball to where we can. But he is going to need to do a little bit defensively, just like... We really needed to do there. Yoni Yama, I've subbed him on. I've stuck him in at deep line playmaker. And that is some of the worst defending I think I've ever seen. We've done so well in this game. Watch Yoni Yama here. He, he's, he's not great by him. Uh, <laughs> what have I just seen? Yeah, it's 1-0. That's unfortunate, isn't it? I mean, you know what? The good news is now that we've gone down a goal, we've got nothing to lose. So we'll just go to the attacking 4-4-2 system that I'd normally use, except there's just one striker. Ono oh, can play left attack in mid as well. So this is a great idea. I'm going to try Hashizume as an inside forward. I have been trying this a little more lately. I've struggled really to get a lot out of him. I have been trying to play him at right attacking mid because of the fact, well, he's a right attacking mid, but as a winger because of how it fits within our system. But as an inside forward, he does tick a lot of boxes. And in a game like this where we only have one striker, just having him tuck inside probably will help our overall shape. Anyway, tactical changes have... Have they occurred or haven't they occurred? I don't know if they've occurred or not. There's a kickoff highlight happening here. Yoni Yama inside to Omarov. I feel like Yoni Yama now has a point to prove. Hashizume, the winger, who I've just talked all about, with one man to aim for in the middle. He picks out that man. And we've very nearly scored. It's our best chance of the game. I mean, being real for a moment, having gone on such a great run of form, how disappointing is it to have to play the majority of this game down a man? The worst thing as well is, we've not really been outclassed in this game. It's 1-0 after 80 minutes played. Naturally, now we're having a bit of a roll of the dice and committing players forward. But just generally speaking, yeah, we've not been particularly potent going forward. But from a defensive point of view in this game, we've actually been quite good. Sadly, it's going to amount to diddly squat. This game just finishes 1-0. They knocked us out in the cup earlier in the well the season a couple of months ago. They've knocked us out here. I'm not even that annoyed with the performance. I feel like that was a fairly respectable result. Sadly, what it does mean is Espels leave us into fifth. We drop down to sixth. And as you can see... There's a few teams of te games in hand behind, including Catalair, who if they were to win their game in hand, would knock us out of the playoffs. The worst thing of all is, as well, of the two games that we've got going on today, that was the more winnable one. Omarov is on a goal drought, by the way, of six hours. That's not ideal. I'm going to have a little criticism chat with him. Omarov, I need you to do better. Admittedly, he's not played as much lately. But yeah, today's next opposition, the Galta, at home. Maybe we can get a result against them. Their media prediction was ninth. They were relegated a couple of years ago. Had a really disappointing first year in the division. But right now, you can see they find themselves in second. And in fact, they've got a game in progress right now against Jeff United, which if they win might take them back to the top of the table. Indeed, it does. Yeah, they are back top of the league. Matsumoto Yamaga do have a game in hand, and they've played 25 games. Also, Catalair 
beat Hollyhock. So we're now out of the playoffs officially. The next game matters all the more. And that next game, good news, it's in a week. So I'm going to go rest at the players, dust ourselves off. We need a better result. We're not going to have Tabba for it. I can't work out if I love or hate this man. Two red cards already in his career. Mm, not ideal. Okay, folks, game number two, Vigalta, today's opposition, at home, seventh versus third. They're going to want to win this game. If they do win it, they'll go back to the top of the table. If we win here, we'll climb back up to fifth and be exactly where we started today's episode. Now, in terms of team news, of course, Tapper is suspended because he got sent off, so Omarov is going to come back into the team. Thinking of it, he and Takagi should be swapped around. Takagi, a pretty decent pressing forward, but to be honest, Tabba is equally as good as a pressing forward. I feel like, at least on paper, I am now beginning to to wonder with Tabba getting sent off, maybe Takagi should be the permanent pressing forward and then we can just have Tabba be the advanced forward because at least then he's less likely to get asked to do tackles. Uh, in terms of the rest of the team though, it is the exact same as the previous game. The injuries that left mid continue to persist, so Kayanoki's in there. Actually, I say it, everything I've just said. Ignore it, I've lied. Ataki's back from suspension and bringing back in the centre-back today. Uh, of course, we've got new centre-backs joining us. Ataki, kind of a player I'd like to replace. And just as a little reminder, those signings are happening in two weeks time we have look manga joining us as a very very good center back option but equally sakaguchi who we've signed as a center back i think he's going to be competing for one of those starting spots you might notice actually here a couple of sales otsuka being sold from the b team we don't really need to talk about him he's been at the club a little while but yeah leaving for pennies to Iwaki. but takabe you might remember i brought in as a depth center back and center mid option this year it's been unhappy with his lack of first team football which is kind of fair enough we've ended up selling him for 140 000 pounds to ventfere who are admittedly in our own division but for a player he signed on a free who played two games to make a hundred thousand pounds off him doesn't feel that bad anyway saying all of that for today's game we've got to go with the defense on show here this is it at full strength the left mid position in the striking area the only real areas compromised today for galta by comparison a team shooting their shot at the top of the table if we just take a quick look at their profile fujitani is their key man this guy's a very good striker, isn't he? He's really, really good. Why is it so orange? What is what is going on with the lighting? If I go out and into the game, did, did that fix it? I think it fixed it. If you ever have weird lighting stuff in Football Manager, just middle mouse click and then go back into the game. It usually kind of fixes it. Anyway, I think there is still some weird colouring stuff going on here, but we're just going to ignore it and hope that it doesn't distract the players as well. I feel like we're going to be tested a fair amount here. The Galta are a very, very good team. Typically, though, this year, we've done well against some of the, the big boys in the division. These are perhaps the biggest of the boys. They've taken a lead in less than six minutes. N not ideal. Last episode, having been on a really rough run of form, we were able to turn it around in the live commentary with two wins and two clean sheets. Today, we came into the episode with some really good form, taking on some teams that I knew were going to be tricky, and we might lose both of them. This game has not started very well, has it? I'm trying to find a positive. Having conceded early on, we've not immediately collapsed in this game. We've had 40% of the ball. We have actually created some shots, but no meaningful highlights just yet. Going to get a little bit shouty-shouty with the players here. But, I mean, we're hanging on in there. They're not creating a ton. There's not really been any highlights to speak of. The game's just bogged down in the midfield. Well, until now. Sato for them, bringing the ball forward on the left-hand side. Lays it back to Yamasaki. The Galta trying to puncture a hole through the centre of our team. They're playing very, very narrow right here. Sato into a wide area. Options in the middle. Eren, edge of the box. Yamasaki steps in and scores. That might have deflected in. It's his first goal of the season. I feel like Nakano in goal could have maybe done better. Just based on how this ball entered the net, I feel like it must have taken a deflection. Aaron to Yamasaki. He shot... And, yeah, that has deflected in, hasn't it? It's 2-0. They're playing a three-at-the-back system with kind of two defensive mids and wing-backs as well. I feel like I'm kind of playing into their hands by going more attacking, but equally, I feel like there's no time like the present to go more attacking. We need to take a bit of a gamble and a bit of a risk, I think, if we want to get back into this game. Defensively, I don't feel like we've been particularly bad, but we've just not created anything, and we're going to need at least two goals to get anything. So let's go for a roll of the dice. Let's get it to Omarov. Let's... Watch Omarov miss. He was offside. It wouldn't have counted anyway. For a moment, I thought he was going to end his goal-scoring drought. Sadly, not the case there. And at the break, it's 2-0. I feel like if you saw the XG story without the goals marked on it, you'd think, been an even game. Doesn't really feel that way. Okay, got shouty-shouty with the players' half-time, but I'm not going to make any changes just yet. Sooner or later, I am going to have to make them, though. Our wide midfield players have been particularly disappointing today. 
52 minutes played, though. Still plenty of time, you know what, to turn it around. Let's remain positive. We've won the ball in a good area here. Takagi, Kayanoki, the left midfielder, pulls the trigger. And I'll tell you what, I subbed him off in the last game because he was on a booking. He's on a booking here. Now I'm not going to sub him off. That was a sensational finish by the left midfielder. We won the ball high up the pitch. It was pretty self-inflicted here. But from this situation, we still had a lot to do. Takagi laid it wide. Kayanoki... Players all around him. They did not distract him. He's picked his corner. He's found his corner. It's 2-1. I think I am still going to make some changes here. Okamura, I am going to bring on for Omarov, who has been struggling in this game. The 18-year-old is a very good forward who has yet to find his feet for the club. Did have a couple of good appearances lately on off the bench, but has just dropped out the team a little bit more recently. On the right-hand side as well, Kamiyama struggling. So Hashizume on you come there. Two fresh legs in the final third. Two pacey players as well. Maybe against a tiring defence, they can make something happen. You can see the left back and the left centre defensive mid for Vigalta have been their best performers. So I'm trying to switch up the personnel targeting those players in the hopes it play, pays dividends. But with 20 minutes left, nothing, no real shift in fortune. Going to make further changes. Ferreira is struggling. Yoniyama on you come. I mean, I kind of want to make more changes. Kato on for Mitsuhashi. I'm going to save one sub in my back pocket for now, but we're going to take a little bit of a risk here. With 19 minutes left, get on some more attacking-minded players and see if they can make something happen. Kato, the right-back, shoots, is blocked by his own man, but we do maintain the ball at the very least. And right now, we've got them on the back foot. Kato whipping in. Takagi's there, and that could have, probably should have, been 2-2. Ono's handballed it, and the, the highlight ends. 10 minutes left here. I'm going to ask the players to go a little higher tempo with the play and look to hit those earlier crosses. We need a miracle. Maybe it can be delivered here. Denise whips it in. Back post. Attacky was under it. Couldn't get there. Takagi does win a header, but it nestles on the roof of the net. It didn't ever really feel like it was going to go in. Added time, quickly approaching. I feel like we've taken some gambles here. We've tried to make something happen, but with five minutes left of added time, we're just not going to create enough. Or are we? Ono to whip it in. Last chance of the game. Half-headed away. What's happened? Denise still has it. Edge of the box. Yoni Yama. Ono, the left back, with it. Hashizume. Shoots wide. That is a really bad miss. He didn't even hit the target. And with that final chance, the game ends. 2-1 to Vigalta. Two games that we've lost by a one-goal margin. And had we even just got a draw in them, I probably wouldn't be panicking as much as I am right now. We find ourselves now outside of the playoffs. There is 12 games left of the league season. I would love to make the playoffs. I feel like that still has to be the aim. If I want to find a positive, the team in 10th Gifu are actually 13 points behind us. There is a big gap between the kind of top nine teams and then the bottom 11 teams. And we are in that upper pack. But yeah, not ideal today. Denise is going to be out for a couple of days. That's okay with me. And whilst we have got the Empress Cup in three days' time, I'm not going to get carried away with the Empress Cup just yet. If we got on a run like we did last year, don't fret. I'll probably come back for an episode where I'm talking about how amazing we are and the fact we're going to win it. But as for the here and now, I think the league focus has to be the aim. We have got some tricky games against the likes of Consadole, Sapporo, and then Roasso, who you might remember we've already taken on in episodes. Renoffa then in 19th we should beat. Catalera in 4th could be a challenge. That game is followed by Grampus in 3rd. I know those games aren't a million miles away. I feel like I almost have to come back to them. And Grampus, if I'm not mistaken, have a fairly big stadium. I mean, this stadium looks massive from this picture. How does it only hold 40,000 fans? We'll find out together next episode. Disappointed to drop out the playoffs, but we don't need to panic just yet. We've got a few easier games coming up, but next episode, we are truly going to be tested. The team in third and fourth, our opposition, should be a good way to end the week, and I hope you guys are excited for it. If you have enjoyed today's episode, as always, go down below the video, engage with the video, a like, a comment, goes a long way to feed the videos into the algorithm. Have a lovely rest of your Thursday. We're back tomorrow with more. It's me, Jack. I'll talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.